welcome back to the channel. It's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice One to One, and this is episode two of our rewire project that I showed you on the last video where we went through the first fix. Before we get into it, I want to give a, a little shout out to Sam. So it's Fat Sam's was podcast. He's now a vlogger. So if you go over and check his channel out, he has got loads of industrial um, site work that he's now sharing. It's really interesting. I'm certainly enjoying watching it. I'm not just saying that for effect. I am a genuine subscriber and I watch. The content is putting out equally on the Spark show with Neil. So if you've not seen that, I'm going to link these two channels in the description below. And he's got some cracking content over on that as well. So go and check those two guys out and um, see if you find any enjoyment over on their channels as well. And while we're on with the shout outs, for those of you who aren't aware, um, TESP, TESP have got um, a new, well it's not new, it was out at the start of last month, so it's with the youth group. And they're looking for mentors to come forward and give about 45 minutes of the time every so often to speak with young people coming into the electrical industry and give them some advice and mentorship. I've signed up. A lot of people within the Apprentice One to One community have as well already. Um, the message has started to get spread far and wide on social media, which is an incredible thing actually to see other people joining in. And I'm hoping to do some sort of podcast with them that Bob Nasir is in the process of trying to sort out, I hope. So we'll maybe try and get that out as well. I know I've stopped the kind of podcasts for the time being because the stuff, as I've said, that I've got going on in other places. So it's just finding the time to, to record them. But I will um, make an extra special effort to get that sorted because I think that's a really good initiative. Um, but yeah, otherwise, we're going to have a little look around this job now. I'll spin you around in a minute and take you on a walk through and then we'll cut for a chat around the consumer unit where I can explain um, the circuit design we've gone for. And a shout out actually to Muzzy Spark on Twitter, which is Ash, I believe. Um, he asked a question on some of the circuit arrangements in this install. So yeah, I'm going to run through those and have a little have a little chat. Thanks to everyone who's joining in in the comments. I really appreciate that. Actually, I like to re reply to people and um, share ideas and thoughts. I'm not trying to say I'm a smart ass who gets all this right. I'm sure there's stuff in my installs that I don't know other people would do them. So if you want to drop in the comments and ask questions, please fire away. It's impossible to insult me. So I will. Uh, respond accordingly unless you've been a troll and threatening to come around my house and murder me in which case i will block you and not engage but otherwise i'm happy to discuss things so we've got the crab tree broad mounted and you'll see some of the um, clear benefits of this one we've got the double screw terminals for the main tails flexi tails on this one so they're just popped in loose and ready to get straightened up we've got the glands all on the top ready to dress the cables into as well nice securing gland um, on the tail so to pop the air through there and then we've got this um, buzz bar, if you're not familiar with it, with the crab tree, there's no um, clipping buzz bar at the bottom and they all just kind of lock in there so there's no terminations to make across the bottom which is nice. But I'll get on with this and we'll jump back on the video in a second and talk through a little bit of what we've done. So we're sort of at the stage now where we've got the consumer unit on the wall, the wires are starting to be dressed away, I thought I'd show you a mid shot. But as I mentioned we've got the SPD in this board, this is a crab tree starbreaker board, starbreaker board. Uh, no din rail as I mentioned earlier in the video. I've got the cables dressed down the top so I'm going to pop get it in focus pop a little bit of trunking down over them and then there's a piece of ply that's going to cover um, the back of that as well so they're well out of sight you can see on the top there we've got the nice gland that's in the top for the tails to hold them tight this is a tt i haven't put the upfront rcd and, and such in as yet but i will be doing um, so obviously we've got that as well um, to cover the tails but i just thought belt and braces will get a nice gland on it it's double insulated uh, inside there or equivalent at, uh, of i think is what they actually say so there's that. So yeah, cable dressed in, get them secured up the back, a bit of trunking, cover it over, and then we'll start dressing the rest of the CU away. And um, yeah, just trying this dual camera thing. So I apologize if it's not coming across in the best way, but thought we'd give it a shot, new feature on the phone, and um, yeah, try it on YouTube. Thought we'd have a look at these. If you see on the back there, they've got the little prong. That's what pushes into these little clamps on the back there that you might be able to see inside the CU. Um, these are type A, obviously. The, the general idea is, you simply insert them onto the DIN rail and then push it in and that's it. So a really nice way to fit um, an RCB or MCB and they have the, the um, crimped ends, well they're not crimped are they, but you know what I mean. So the solid ends, they're not the splayed ends, there's no need for ferrules, they can go straight in the neutral bar. Jobs are good in. So yeah, I'm enjoying these crab tree star breakers and uh, yeah, they're a type A 30 milliamp. And we'll speak about why when it's all wired up and I've got the main RCD switch in as well. So I'll uh, fire back on with this and jump back on in a second. Okay, so you'll see we've got the sockets up on here. This is the little office room and 
light fitting up in the center the customer still needs to make good you'll see the condition of these walls is actually terrible it's not in the best condition at all we've got our top fill to a point so it's just the first fill and the customers asked us to just leave it like that and not bother in this room because they're going to have it reskinned. so at least the cables and um the tube that we showed you in the first video are all covered over and protected and we know we've got that to a point so we filled these up and the customers come and strip the wallpaper at the weekend um yeah so we've got that all sorted you'll see in here we've got the sockets in the corner of the room and one over there so there's going to be a bed here so that's beside the bed the light switch has moved to this side and because the door is flipping around the other way uh, plumber's busy so all the floors are still up actually he's popped a few of them back so i'm lying but the floors are still up we've got the nice light fitting here on the landing and smoke detection up there if i spin you around this way there is also a nice light fitting that's hanging on the stairway um, light switch at the top of the stairs in the bathroom we've got a nice light fitting up in the middle there no electric shower or anything and if you scoop around into this cupboard you'll see we've stripped it all out the tank's gone all the old switch gear i showed you before has all disappeared the actual plan with this going forward is the door is actually moving that way so it's going to go further towards the room there and this is going to be knocked out to make a bigger landing the change in the layout up here i think to make a bit of a bigger landing space this bedroom as you have watched on the first video hopefully the um, sockets are, are all finished now we're all on second fix we've tested all this already i've bobbed the power off for now just so we can have a look in the consumer unit and i can talk you through some of the circuit designs as we mentioned we swoop downstairs it's a bit of a mess down here because the plumber's been on what a legend he is by the way um we've got the sockets on and again these are top filled and sanded back now so they're a nice nice finish it's always worth round going round at the end because you will get little breakouts here and there and obviously you don't want to be having to go around putting another top fill on and making it nice so get them to a point chop them out so they're nice and clean fit your accessories and then tidy them up um, plumber's got a bit of a mess going on in the kitchen we have got our sockets on and the cooker point you can see there um yeah it still needs some tidying out this one so we're we're going to come back when they get the kitchen plan and get the units in and make a proper job of it but to a point we've got all of the wiring in obviously all these walls need making good and there's a lot of work still to be done but they're wanting to be moving in and doing a little living project so i've got it to a point for them in here if i spin you around we've gone for ip stuff so we've got a bulkhead light there and the ip socket down here um yeah it's just because the roof is actually leaking it's raining outside but i'll spin you around so you can see the old um box going to outside was fine so we've, we've left that and just put our new cable into the back of there uh, they didn't want to mess about rewiring the garage because it's actually coming down but it's handy to have a bit of power out there for the short term so we've um, reconnected that for the minute and it's on the new system uh yeah so that's kind of kind of it it's led me back towards the consumer unit i'll actually show you this wall here so we've got the uh, sockets there for the tv some more usb ones and another socket in that corner there referencing back to that first bedroom with all the usb sockets i don't know quite why they wanted so many of those together but that's what he asked for i think we're looking for a bit of a home office again this wall we've got the as i explained before and i'll mention this in a minute to do with what the plumbers told us but yeah we've got these sockets here going across this wall so we've got horizontal chairs which i don't specifically like doing but i'm glad we've gone for that in this case and that comes up to the top and again we've just popped bonding on because he said when we strip this it's going to be easier for us to skim over rather than have the the top fill so he's asked us to leave that at the bonding stage which we can do um yeah little light under this under here so you can see up there we've got a nice light fitting in this is all work in progress with the plumber he is an absolute superstar this fella he's been a lovely man to meet that's one of the things i like with site work i'll spin you around actually if i can figure out how to do that yeah that's one of the things i love about site work is the people you meet he's an absolute godsend to have on a, on a job with you someone who you can just bat a bit of banter around with and tell a few tales and stories and he's got a few to tell and some um yeah yeah so that's been nice to meet him and if he does actually watch this video he said he might then uh yeah cracking fella really enjoyed that but he has got his work cut out and um i'll spin you around and show you a bit of that as well but he mentioned the gas pipes in this place were still running lead pipe and one of those if i spin you around again we're running up this wall here so if you reference back to the first video and I said I really didn't want to chase into there, it was an old lead pipe and he's actually capped it off on the back there now. I can't really show you it because it's a bit of a tight corner. But it did, it kind of spanned down this wall here, 
came across pretty much where we were thinking of chasing in the corner and then disappeared somewhere under this concrete and then reappeared under the floor and it runs up this wall again in in lead so he's brought his new gas pipe over that you can see there we've got a nice bonding clamp on it's not currently connected because the gas is switched off but obviously um he's sorting that out tomorrow he's got his uh gas pipe running down there you can see that nice new supply coming in but speaking about the waste pipe for this toilet we've just been chatting with him today it's an absolute task and a half to get a toilet waste pipe and customers just don't realize this when they ask for toilet in the middle of the house quite how they're going to make that possible there's no drains on the side of the property they all run out the back uh, this is concrete and there's a concrete floor on the extension out there as well the main drain is just outside the door there and it drops down about six meters into it so yeah he's um scratching his head and they're going to have to break all this up and make a right mess to try and do it um, but yeah let's have a look at the the, the important bit, the consumer unit. I'm still waiting for the breaker for the shower. There is going to be an electric shower going in now, I'm told, and we've pulled the cable up. It is just straight up here. Bathroom's above us, so that's all in and ready to, to wire in. Breaker's come in, so that's why there's a spare way in there waiting to be sorted. Um, the electricity supply has been sorted as out, so we've got some new tails in. We drop down into this um, RCCB. So as I mentioned in the first video, I wanted to use an upfront time delayed 100 milliamp, 100 amp RCD or RCCB just to protect the tails um, because of my issue with some of these floating cables around the inside of the consumer unit. And some people have dropped comments in that they've got no issue with the, the neutral tails and stuff from the RCBOs. I think they were getting the wrong end of the stick. That isn't what I was actually on about. It's to do with the SPD and I'll, I'll mention that again when we have a look inside. Just to stay with this, it is a plastic enclosure. I know some people get upset with that. They like to see the metal enclosures because they consider that the same as a consumer unit. Um, I don't, in my opinion, it's different. And with a TT, it's safer to have the tails coming into a plastic enclosure, in my opinion, and then go through the RCDs. So you've still got that protection on the tails entering the steel enclosure. And if you reference back to the first video, I showed you how we used the, the gland up in here. And uh, yeah, so the tails are nicely clamped and secured. They're into these double screw terminals. This is all a selection of this particular product from Crabtree. This is why I've gone for it. The tails are nice and secure in the main switch. We've got the, the glanded entry point at the top and then the clipping RCBO. So it's trying to limit all of the exposure of um, live terminals within the metal consumer unit. I thought this was a, a better way of doing it. If you had a different way, let me know in the comments. But this is the thing I was on about. So there's the actual fly lead between the SPD and the main switch. So that has no overcurrent protection other than the, the tails um, main fuse on the supplier's head. You know, that would come straight through that main switch, straight into that SPD. And you can see how it's actually sat on the, the case in there as well. And it, that's just the, the shape that it is from the manufacturer. Um, I can move that most likely. So I might just push that out of the way as well, just to get it off there. Uh, but yeah, it was just it was just that issue if this casing ever became live and if you have a split load board It used to be a bigger problem for me because how many of you see these big loops of cables the manufacturers use Between the RCDs and they're just off the main switch. They're not Protected in any way and if you don't have this up front RCD on them inside a metal enclosure then that can present quite a problem um, on a TT installation and uh, Yeah, it's it's just one of the, the, the nuances of um, been involved in that kind of thing it gets you thinking like i said my initial thought was to jump onto um Hager because that's our go-to board but the reason i opted for crabtree was because these are switch neutral rcbos so if you get an earth fault between neutral and earth they will disconnect the neutral and in that case it shouldn't then upset this up front 100 milliamp rcd obviously if it's a linked neutral then that fault is still in in the circuitry even if the rcbo is operated under a fault condition um, so yeah, it was it was one of those where I thought that was the best option. Speaking about circuit design, we've got the, the cooker radial, which you'll see in the top there. I have gone for a ring final circuit in the kitchen, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, we've got a few radials around the place, so there's a radial to the downstairs front room and hall. We've got a couple of radials upstairs, and then the, the lighting circuits as well, where we've got two of those. And it was just the case of trying to divide things in a sensible way that, that worked um, for lack of nuisance to the occupants when things trip and I know sometimes people can get a bit carried away with the number of RCBOs and the value of the main service fuse and you need to remember that the, the fixed load within a property is based on the occupants 
And if you've divided your circuits in such a way that you know you're limiting the amount of disruption due to sort of a, a protected device operating, um, you're not really putting the service fuse at risk unless they was to start some sort of cannabis factory in the house or have a load of electric heaters plugged in. That's always always a concern. But we've got an hundred amp service head here, and I'm quite happy with this circuit arrangement. It's still minimal and there's not that many circuits in there to be honest. So we're all good. The ring final circuit in the kitchen was really, we've got a new apprentice started with us and I'll, I'll talk about that as well in a second. And I like to try and teach these things. I know it's like a, a dying art, or oh, it's not a dying art, people still do use ring final circuits. They're in the regulations, they're perfectly acceptable. It's only when people start messing about with them that you get issues. And yeah, I just wanted to show him um, how you do it. I think it's quite interesting to test a ring final circuit as well. So it was, um, for that purpose, the customer had actually asked for a ring in the kitchen. I mean, obviously they're not electricians, they're just using terminology that they think is what they should be asking for. Um, if I'd suggested to go for a radial and explained that the power available is exactly the same, I'm sure it wouldn't have been an issue at all. But yeah, in this instance, we've gone for a ring final circuit because why not? And yeah, that's that's kind of it really. Um, we've got the, the bonds on, so the gas and water, we've got the electrode connected, um, we've got the RCCB there up front and again get involved in the comments. I love people joining in the discussion. I really enjoy um, Talking about these things and learning myself. That's one of the things that I've always said I'm not here to be a clever know-it-all or try and tell everyone my way is the only way or the best way I enter into these discussions and put my work out there to try and encourage other people to do just that Don't be frightened to share what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis We're just electricians trying to make a living at the end of the day and um, yeah, we'll all make mistakes because a lot of it won't be on social media, will it? And no one sees it. So yeah, don't be frightened if you're thinking of putting your content out there. Get on with it and share it. That's my my motto to all of that. But yeah, jumping back on while we're talking about these things with Apprentice One to One. For anyone who isn't aware, we've been getting on for 700 people now. We've been back into work through the course of it starting. I think it must be coming towards a full year now. I really need to check the dates. I think I maybe started it properly the early part of June last year. I had been kind of doing things off social media for a while before that, but to actually formed it as a as a meaning and discussion on social media, I'm pretty sure it was around a year ago. Um, but yeah, we're getting on for 700 now. I think off the top of my head it is actually 700 and it was me who pushed it there because we've employed somebody as an apprentice this week. And that's something that I love to do in my business, get new people into the trade. I'm practicing what I preach. So I am often trying to encourage other people to, to grow the businesses if they've got the option to do so, to give young people an opportunity to learn. And hopefully we'll introduce this person on my channel as time moves along and you can uh, see their journey. That'd be quite a nice one to share, I think, amongst the, the YouTube community. This has actually been delayed a little bit. Uh, so Vanessa Malcolm from uh, Super Rod Klein put forward some equipment for an apprentice to... Um, use and showcase their skills as they develop their their learning journey and their career and in the end that didn't end up happening with my business so we um we gave those bits of equipment away through the cost of giveaways on social media and and tagged them in all of that because they're big supporters of the apprenticeship system but i, d I do want to thank vanessa and malcolm they've been a huge support to apprentice one-to-one -one right from the very beginning and um yeah they're still doing that now we're sharing posts and they've just been kind uh, it's not all about providing free gear for apprentices. It's just that that support and to know other people that are there thinking of what you're doing. And, you know, um, I appreciate that massively. And, yeah, while we're on with that, actually, Dan from Tools Down, if you've not on my Instagram, we've got a giveaway running where he sent in some. Uh, from Tools Down has sent a solder mate and three Cal cards to give away. So thanks, Dan. I ordered some brockets. Actually, I can show you those because I've got them in here. You know, around these are absolutely amazing. So there's the, the Brocket conduit bush. You can get the aluminium and steel versions. Go for the steel ones if you use them anything like as much as I do. They're a lot better, um, in my opinion. So that, yeah, I ordered some of those from Dan and he just chucked in the box some of the some of the cal cards and the um, uh, solder mate. So cheers for doing that. We're doing a giveaway on Instagram. Still be live right now when this video is out. So if you've not entered, get over there and get your entry in. It's open to all apprentices and hopefully we can get those passed out. And that happens every day through Apprentice One to One. It really actually makes my day when it does happen. So it couldn't just be an electrician saying, I've got some power tools that I no longer use. Can you find a home with them for an apprentice? Pack of screwdrivers and all sorts of little bits and pieces like that. And then we've got people like Stuart Cato and Eddie Clemens who've sent in test instruments and others who wanted to um, remain unnamed who've done just the same as well. It's really, really nice. Um, and all of the manufacturers, specifically TIS, 
um, super rod and climb. Also sockets, if you've not seen those, they've sent some stuff in as well. Um, it's just been an absolute pleasure to do this over the last year. I've loved every second and um, long may it continue in the form it is as Apprentice one to one. One I go, I do want to talk about is this. Somebody had asked in the questions if I could discuss the DeWalt cable stapler. Now I haven't done a video of it in use because Residual Current has done an excellent one where he used it in a, a loft space. I'll try and find the video and reference it somewhere up here. Um, if it's if it's no longer there, then I won't be able to, I'm afraid. But yeah, basically the principle is you have some metal cable uh, clips that go in here. I don't know if they're actually fire rated to appropriate regs for us to, to call as fire supports. Um, they're probably not, but they are metal. They have a little plastic cover on there um, to protect the cable. And the basic principle is the cable inserts between these two prongs and it will not fire unless there is a cable in there. Uh, you can get a couple in together and it will support them together as well. Uh, and then you just pull the trigger, fires a clip in and that's it. It will go into a lightweight block as well. It's not just for timber, it will actually fire them into different substrates. You just have to suck it and see on those. I don't think it's rated to do any of that, but it does through experience. And uh, yeah, it's a nice lightweight tool. If you're doing a lot of new build, especially, these are an absolute godsend. They will save you hours and hours of time. Um, you're not gonna pierce your cable because you know it won't fire if there's no cable. Uh, in the middle, it's not in the right place, so it's pushing on one of the outer prongs. It won't latch into shoot a staple, so there's no danger of you making a silly mistake. And uh, yeah, really like it. It's a um, proper decent tool. They're not even that expensive anymore either. When they first came out, I think they were about quid or so. It's a reasonable investment. Pretty sure now you can pick them up for a sort of 150 quid mark if you shop around. I'm going to get this closed back up now. I've showed you inside the consumer unit. I will um, pop everything back together. And then maybe do a very quick time lapse running around the building just showing you it with the lights on and stuff. So I will catch you all on the next one. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Go and check out um, Sam's show. I will link that in the description. And the Sparks show. Go and check both those out. I would have mentioned the Bearded Sparks channel, but there's absolutely no point. Because as we know, Ricky's now living in Scotland somewhere in a forest. And it's nothing to do with the social media landscape. So it's pointless. So I'm not going to mention the Bearded Spark in the description either. <laughs> So yeah, there's there's all of that. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I will hopefully catch you all on the next one if I've not put you off. And uh, enjoy the time lapse at the end of this video and get involved in the comments. Just wanted to say actually, we're using the Click Skullmore range of accessories and they're really pretty nice actually. I quite like them. So this is the USB socket, for example. And over here we have a light switch. Nice big rockers on them. Reassuring click sound. Uh, yeah, decent quality gear, nice price as well, so yeah, we've gone for these on this one. Customer is really happy with them as well, so that's a good one. I'll pop the little time lapse up now and catch you on the next one.